Something caught my eye today in the satellite picture. Maybe the biggest, driest upper low that I've seen. You can see it here. It's this orange brownish ball there off to the southwest of California. Now, sometimes they're dry like that in this area, but this is about the biggest I've ever seen. Most upper lows, like the one you see here over parts of the Midwest, have a little bit of clouds in it. So this is pretty extreme. I'll take a look at where is it going, and then I'll come back and say how it developed. Very dry air here. The cloudiness, the moist air shows up in this water vapor imagery in gray. So this upper low is going to continue off toward the northeast here in our computer forecast. It moves from off of California by the time we get up to Tuesday into Montana and then turns east into Minnesota. And as it does so, it's going to trigger as it gets into some Gulf of Mexico moisture, some severe thunderstorms that will roll from the high plains down into the Great Lakes and into even the mid-Atlantic on Tuesday and Wednesday. How did it get to be this way? Well, here we're watching over the past five days or so, and I paused it at this point. It is just to the north of what is called the subtropical jet. That's a high-level jet stream down at pretty low latitudes. Off to the north of that, the winds here are a little bit sheared in a counterclockwise turn. And here these winds were going this way, so it's in a shear zone. And when these two branches get closer together, they, uh, like a skater spinning faster as the arms are pulled inward, so did this shear zone got pulled into a very t intense little upper low. So it's kind of an amazing feature. By itself at this point, it doesn't have much moisture to work with, so it's not doing much, but it could over the next few days create some dry lightning that will be a fire hazard in the west. And then Tuesday into Wednesday, some severe thunderstorms from the high plains across the Great Lakes to the mid-Atlantic. We'll follow it.